I was actually pretty close to dying. Uh, my doctors tell me I was lucky to have made it. When I arrived at the hospital, I remember very clearly, because I'm very sensitive to this, telling triage that Naomi Cohen was going to be meeting me at the hospital, that she is the person that you need to be giving information to. I signed all the forms. I let them know that she was my health care power of attorney, that we were in a civil union. Um, she went to find the emergency room doctor that was treating me. And uh, when she asked for information about my status, he said he wasn't able to give her that, that he would need my consent. And it finally occurred to her that, you know, he, he just, he didn't understand the significance of the relationship and didn't understand what a civil union was. So she asked him, well, if I was her husband, would you be able to give me that information? And he said, yes. And she said, well, then you're required by law to give me this information. And he still didn't understand. My partner was out at a business dinner and he was rushed to the hospital. He was brought in by ambulance. I arrive privately in my own car and at the emergency room desk, I'm told I'm not allowed access to him because I'm not his next of kin. And I told them that we have a civil union partnership. And that's when the woman explained to me that business partners are not next of kin. Second time, my appendix is ruptured. So my friend that brought me to the hospital calls the house and the other half gets in the car to come over. He was told he couldn't see me it wasn't the next of kin because I have a mother and father who are alive and brothers and sisters that are known to them. These were two separate incidents in two separate locations of two separately licensed medical facilities in the state of New Jersey, and nothing had changed. We've had to deal with raising four children, um, two of whom did have significant handicaps. The two of them, this they could not be without um, health insurance. And I had it when I was looking for jobs, I had to ask the question, do you have civil union benefits? And unfortunately, not all companies have civil union benefits. Many looked at me as if I had two heads. They didn't even know what that was. That put us in quite a bit of debt in order to meet their special needs. Um, one of our children is absolutely doing fantastically because of those services. Unfortunately, the other child had uh, significant medical complications, and he passed in July. We've been together for 20 years. We've raised four children, and in the circumstances in which most people would have separated or divorced, I don't know what a marriage is if it's not what we have, and I want that legal recognition. The fact that we can't get married impacts our kids regularly. You know, when they um, meet new children in school. Casey entered a new school this year, and so um, as he met new children and they would talk about their families or what they did over a weekend, who their parents were, he would have to explain that he had two moms and, you know, these new friends, one of their natural questions next would be, um, oh, you have two moms, your mom's married. And so he's forced to say no. No, they're not. They're civil union, and then I have to explain that, and they look at me like I have 50 heads or something. By the way, we can't even explain civil union, so how can a nine-year-old explain civil unions? The other thing for me is that um, every time I hear our kids say, well, you're not actually married. Um, we hope you can get married, but you're not actually married yet. It just, it breaks my heart. My daughter's not any different than anyone else, and, and marriage, is, marriage is what everyone has, and so why should she have civil union? When the day comes for my daughter to get married, I think her father and <laughs> I don't want to cry. <laughs> we just wanted to dance at her wedding. He wants to walk her down the aisle. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a wonderful day. It's going to be, you know, we're going to be a part of the conversations that so many people exclude us from now. Um, I don't think anyone realizes that, but as parents of a gay child, when somebody knows your child is gay, it's sort of like, you know, Conversations will go on with friends, and I don't think they do it purposely. They certainly don't do it purposely. You know, they're, they're good friends, but it, their assumption is that, you know, you won't have this. So when they talk about marriage for their own children, we're basically excluded, and I don't even think they realize they're doing it. So, you know, it's going to be nice to feel included, too, for us. Uh, that's going to be a nice thing. But more importantly than what it's going to give us is what it's going to give my daughter. When I went to Human Resources, that as they told me, they could not 
honor a civil union. It affected our son, being able to make sure that he had health benefits. It had a profound impact on our family. And I don't want, we don't want our son to have to experience stigma because of the oppression and the discrimination of society. I ask you to do what's right, not just for Randy and I, but for our son, so that he doesn't have to grow into an adulthood where he would then talk about how discrimination against his parents affected him. The bill that's in front of the state right now does not require people of any religious tradition to marry people who are sane gendered. It does not require people of faith to attend religious ceremonies in which people of the same gender are getting married. If people join in a relationship of commitment and fidelity, and we honor that as the state, then the state should offer the same opportunity for the exact same benefits and rights and call it the same thing.